Does eBay treat resellers who have a YouTube channel different from everybody else who resells but doesn't have a YouTube channel, especially if you have a big presence on YouTube? Does that make a difference? So the reason why I'm bringing this up is that uh, just yesterday, actually, uh, someone in my Facebook group, uh, Dave, I won't mention his last name, but he also is a subscriber here uh, on the uh, YouTube channel. And there was a video that I had referenced in the Facebook group. It's the Facebook Reselling Resource uh, Center, for those of you who don't know, links down below in the description section, um, in which there was a discussion going on about how to handle a faulty return on eBay. And I had mentioned that I had done a video about this and I uh, described what I had gone through with this faulty return of a comic book that was sent back from California without any protection on it, it was damaged. And I talk about how the eBay rep helped me uh, resolve the situation in a way that uh, I felt was uh, good for me and I was satisfied with the experience. And so um, what Dave said uh, in response, and you could go back, I'm paraphrasing it here, uh, but essentially was, well, you likely got that type of uh, resolution of the case because you have a big presence on social media. Now, I'm bringing up YouTube because that's what everyone would uh, typically glom onto in terms of, you know, where resellers tend to have their bigger presence. But of course, there's other areas on social media where you could have an impact. You could have a really uh, popular Instagram account or a popular Facebook group. But most people who do that also have a YouTube channel. So that's why I'm emphasizing that. Um, and I understand why Dave would think that. In fact, I've actually heard this several other times uh, over the last couple of years where people have brought this up and, uh, you know, I provided a response, but I never did a video on it. And so I figured there's probably other people who think this. And so it'd be good to kind of uh, talk about it a little bit and let you know kind of behind the scenes uh, what actually really happens in these situations. So first of all, it's not like when we call into eBay's customer service line, that there's some sort of flash notification that comes across the screen that says, alert, alert, this is a reseller who has a YouTube channel. It just doesn't work that way. Now, don't get me wrong. It would be great if eBay sent all of us resellers who have a YouTube channel, some kind of secret eBay bat phone thingy that we could just pick up press a number, dials right into the CEO or someone on the board of directors, and they could just solve our problems instantly, just like something like this, maybe, you know? Yeah, hey, Jamie. Hey, yeah, it's prime time. Yeah, hey, what's going on? Yeah, so listen, I was wondering, I've got this negative feedback. Uh, if you guys could just take that off, just take it right out of there. Yeah, don't even, don't even bother looking at it. Take it right off, yep. Yeah. All right, you already took care of it? <laughs> you guys are fast. Wow. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, talk to you later, man. All right. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Not anything close to that. Never will. And uh, same thing with when we call into customer service. They treat us just like anybody else who would call into customer service. Now, there are other things that they are going to look at when they're evaluating your case. They're going to look at things like how long have you been with the company? What's your reputation? What's your feedback like? Do you have a ton of negative feedbacks? You know, how do you communicate and respond to others? What's your track record with the kinds of things that you're calling in for? All of these are types of things that they could look at, but it's not whether or not you have a big Facebook group or you have a big Instagram account or a big YouTube channel or, or if you're really big on TikTok, that doesn't matter, okay? It, it's just not something they're gonna factor in when you make a phone call over to them. Now, ironically, one of the things that they can take into account that could really help you out is whether or not you have a concierge account. So for those of you who do not know, uh, there is a special phone number that you can get access to if you have uh, this concierge account. And this is something that is given out to people uh, when you used to go to eBay open, you would get access to this. Uh, or if you have, you know, certain seller um, metrics and numbers that they look at and are really high, uh, they may grant you special access to one of these accounts. So many people watching this video right now who do not have a YouTube channel have access to the concierge account. Ironically, I do not have a concierge account, okay? So 
it's not like I have that special number anyway, which is the closest thing that they give you really to a bat phone. Uh, but I don't, I don't have anything like that. So the notion that if you have a, a big YouTube channel or a big social media presence, that that's going to grant you that access, you know, that's not true either. But if you have that, yes, you want to use that line. It's, it's basically a, a line that would give you a special uh, priority access. And they really, really do try to help you uh, resolve the situation you know, if you have that. Now, next point, keep in mind that what is considered a big social media presence is all relative. So for example, let's say you're somebody who just started out on YouTube and you've got about 500 to 1,000 subscribers and you come over to my channel and you look and you say, wow, this guy's got 13,000 subscribers. Like that's a big deal. It's over 10,000. It's, it's amazing. Well, if you're sitting in my shoes, you look out to resellers like Rockstar Flipper and Rake and Profits and Craigslist Hunter and Rally Roots and uh, Taco Stacks, like these guys have over 100,000 subscribers. So compared to them, you know, I'm like just nothing compared to that. Like it's just, it's it's huge. So, you know, what's a big social media presence? And, you know, even if you factor people who have over 100,000 subscribers, look at the big universe of YouTube because there are people like Mr. Beast and PewDiePie who have you know, millions of subscribers. So the notion that eBay is gonna care all that much when I call over to them, even if I mention like, hey, you know what? I have this YouTube channel. Uh, and at the time I made that video, my subscribers were like half of probably of what it was now. So probably like around six, 7,000. Again, that's really not that much that they really care that much. Now, am I gonna tell you that they don't care at all about what's said about them publicly on YouTube or in other social media uh, venues? Absolutely not. Of course they care about it. Of course they monitor it. Of course they look at it. Of course they sometimes reach out and contact people who have YouTube channels or big Facebook groups. And you know, if there's an issue that comes up, if there's something they're concerned about that they hear, they might want to talk to you about it. And that does happen. I mean, you watch, watch Rally Roots where, you know, they'll say, I know I'm going to hear from eBay about this or Rockstar Flipper, you know, he'll say the same thing. You know, I know I'm going to hear it from eBay. You know, they monitor certain channels and they do keep up with it. And, you know, it's possible they might want to talk to you and resolve an issue if they think that something, you know, was said that didn't really convey the full picture. They might want you to to at least put that part out. Now, they've never called me or contacted me about anything like that. The only time that uh, eBay did reach out to me was to set up the interview that I did recently uh, with uh, one of the senior managers, uh, Christy. That was, that was a lot of fun. And that was an open-ended interview. I was told I could ask whatever questions uh, that I wanted to ask. There were no limitations, restrictions put on that. Uh, whatsoever, but you know, they saw the channel. They saw that it was a place where people come regularly for interviews. Uh, they saw that you know I do interviews in a respectful way. Um, you know, and I tried to um, you know just get good information out there for the viewers. And they thought that it would be you know a good place for them to to come on uh, to talk to sellers and connect with them. And so that was a positive way that eBay uh, reached out. So yes, in that sense, having a YouTube channel could you know, help you make some connections with people at, at eBay, but you can't then take that leap and say, okay, well, now I have a connection with Christy, or now I have a connection with, you know, so-and-so who connected me with Christy. So that now means that, you know, I could then call them directly or email them directly whenever I have a problem and that they're just going to instantly resolve it. Um, I've never tried to do anything like that. Um, can that help maybe in some situations? My honest answer to that is I don't know. Um, I doubt it. I don't think so. You know, maybe depending on how big you are, you know, it, it could potentially help in some kind of specific situation. But in terms of just your average run of the mill, you're going to just call in over there and talk to someone from customer service. It's not really going to have any kind of, uh, meaningful impact uh, at all. Now, keep in mind that no matter who you are, if you have a big social media presence, however you want to define that or not, if you write some kind of Facebook post or Instagram post or, you know, some type of 
TikTok video or something you share, something that kind of goes viral in which you're complaining about a customer service problem against any company. I don't care if it's eBay, Mercari, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, the local restaurant down the street, whatever it is. If that gets picked up enough, enough people start to get concerned about it, eventually, yes, that's going to get over to someone on a management team and they're going to reach out to you and try to resolve the problem most likely. Uh, and that is something that you know probably wouldn't have happened if you didn't do something like that. So yeah, you can use these forums to kind of try to exert some pressure sometimes, but rest assured when you are watching this channel, when I tell you that a customer service problem was resolved for me or not resolved if I had a problem. Either way, that is because that's how it would have happened for you if you called. If I felt that something happened because I got some kind of special treatment as a YouTuber uh, or running a big Facebook group, I would definitely tell you that and let you know that I thought there was some kind of exception being made there and that this even came up in the context of the conversation, which by the way, it never has. I'm not the type of person that's going to call over to, you know, eBay and say, hey, you know what? I run this big YouTube channel. I have this Facebook group. Well, I don't do anything like that. I just want to see how they normally res would resolve it because that's the way that I could best help out people who are watching who are not going to be saying that things like that when they call over there. And that's what I want to be able to convey to you sometimes is what actually happened during a call or during an email or something like that. All right, now, last point. And this is something that really could get to the core of why some people believe that eBay treats resellers who have YouTube channels differently than resellers who don't have a YouTube channel. And it goes something like this. You watch a YouTube video by someone who's talking about some kind of problem they have with eBay. Let's just say it's how a return was handled. And you see that the person successfully resolved the issue by calling into eBay. And they talk about a particular policy and how it was interpreted. You have the same issue. You, you remember the video. You call over to eBay. You talk to customer service and you say, hey, yeah, I got this problem. And, um, you know, could we just work on resolving it? And you expect it to be resolved the way you heard on the video. Yet you hear a completely different interpretation and are told, no, sorry, it can't really be handled that way. And then how are you going to feel? You're logically going to walk away thinking that, well, maybe that person did get special treatment because they have a YouTube channel, but it's not true. What really is going on there is, and it's something I talked about when I did the interview recently, you should go check it out, the interview with uh, eBay's uh, senior manager, Christy, is that sometimes there's inconsistency in the training, or at least in terms of how the training is sometimes absorbed by different people, uh, you know, who are at different levels of training. So somebody, person A over at eBay customer service may not know the policy as well as person B. And sometimes, you know, person B has a lot more experience and person A should reach out to that person. And sometimes they will, but sometimes, sometimes they don't. And they tell you incorrect information. Like I had that happen, for example, when I called over to eBay and I asked them to remove a negative feedback on me uh, for someone who left one in a case where I offered free returns. I took the free return and I was told that I had to wait uh, like 10 days or seven days or something before they could process and take the negative feedback off. So I waited all this time. I was actually told that it was going to automatically drop off of my account never happened. I called back like seven to 10 days later, I think it was seven days and talked to a different person at customer service who told me, yeah, that person who told you that was totally incorrect. And when you complete the case, as soon as you complete it, you have to call over to us and we will take the feedback off. It doesn't automatically drop off, but you don't have to wait seven days. Now, this is me. This is the same person, the guy who runs a YouTube channel, whether or not you want to call it big or small, or big social media presence or not. I'm calling over two different times. The first time, not really getting help to solve my situation. I'm told I have to wait. And then the second time, I'm given the information that's actually correct. And that's not from me calling in to any kind of special hotline. I call the same exact number back. 
So it really gets down. If you ever see that, it's really something that has to do with inconsistency of, of, of training or and or absorption of the information at different levels. And that's something that, um, you know, I think needs to be worked on. There needs to be a more consistent experience for uh, sellers and buyers calling in, uh, trying to get a clear understanding and interpretation of the policy. Uh, so anyway, I hope that clears up a few things. Uh, thanks, uh, Dave, for the comment and uh, spurring on uh, this video. It's something I've meant to uh, cover. And, um, you know, again, like I said, I've seen it come up a couple times. I wanted to make sure, uh, just in case anyone else was wondering about that, that kind of get that out there. So because I haven't seen it come up before on in, in other uh, venues or places. So anyway, if you like the video, please make sure uh, that you hit the like button and real important, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Can't emphasize that enough, uh, particularly this year, real important. Um, really want to get those videos out there more uh, into uh, circulation and into those recommendations uh, so other people could see it if they're interested. Uh, thanks a lot. Make sure you come by to the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. All those links are down below in the description section. I'll see you back in the next video, everyone. Take care.